So today it's the full drive from home because my big daughter is not going to kindergarten today. She doesn't feel too well, so it's better to have her home. Also, as I said in the intro video to the predictions, we actually want to have a nice evening today. And maybe it's better to have her rested and not play like crazy and have her then uh, tired which is never a good idea for kids. Uh, yeah, group stage is over. Let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, I think this is now, in a way, at the, almost the best time to reflect on the entire group stage, the World Cup, and where we go from here. Um, it's also kind of this break. It's the first day where we um, don't have a game since the World Cup started. So naturally, um, it is a break and it is the break between the phase where, you know, many games, um, a lot of fun, at the end a little bit of drama, or, although it can be quite some drama, and now it's all um, loser go home. Uh, knockout stage, now every game really, 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 really counts. And that gets me to the first point of the group stage. I understand why the World Cup has a group stage. Um, if you uh, have teams qualifying, you don't want to send them home after just one game. Uh, totally understand that. Um, it makes sense. However, um, every group stage uh, towards the end is such a, how to say, positive negative affair. Uh, you have a few groups that is high drama and then you have a few groups where it just is boring as hell uh, At this World Cup we fortunately had three groups where actually things were going quite um, uh, Almost better than you could expect. I think uh, especially group B at the end where there were so many changes in scores and actually the Morocco Spain game with uh, which, which was a high scoring game and was an essential game for Spain uh, that made it all the more interesting and that uh, Iran and Morocco were not the pushovers that everyone expected them to be um, so that group was a lot more even than it looked yes the two big guys went through uh, and uh, on paper it doesn't look like much but that was a lot of drama also, Group D with Argentina, Nigeria and Iceland. Um, yes, it was the most focus was on Argentina and Nigeria. And that was already dramatic in, in itself because you knew that uh, Argentina had to get the winner. Um, but if in addition you would have seen, I didn't, but if you would have seen the Iceland game in parallel and maybe there was some uh, conference or parallel, um, watching then I think the drama gets even better because Iceland was really when you look at the um, a summary of that game Iceland had so many chances to score uh, it was unbelievable that they didn't uh, so that added to the drama um, then we had uh, the group F which was slightly dramatic but it was kind of more linear uh, you, as I said yesterday uh, after my group in my group H conclusion video that yeah we had that Sweden put the pressure on um, from what I get as Sweden was putting the pressure on from the beginning so Sweden put the pressure on and then um, it just Germany faltered it was the clear Germany needs to get the win and that was where all the tension came from not from anything else in that um, uh, particular setting. And it was almost similarly yesterday between Senegal and um, Colombia. Um, and I understand that, uh, that Colombia wanted to get the win. Um, of course, if you don't get that win, you are really risk that if there's an equalizer between Japan and Poland that you're out. So I think that made sense to me, although both would have gone through with, uh, with a draw. And especially, yeah, there was a time, but you know, this is me with some conspiracy. There was a time when uh, I think Japan, Poland, 
finished two minutes earlier. If that was no to the players, I think Colombia could have maybe gone. Yeah, let's get, get uh, let's put the, let Senegal put the goal in. The problem I think was that Colombia wanted to win the group. Um, and yeah, because you are you are better off winning that particular group. You are in the easier uh, branch. Yes, you probably have a tough. Uh, round of 16 but you had that anyway because I mean either Bel uh, as Belgium or England are not the easiest to play against and maybe you you kind of sense that if you rated Belgium higher well England was the one that you wanted to go for so you know I get it uh, part of me wanted that they let Senegal score but I get it uh, that Colombia needed to win this uh, needed to win this one to win the group um, it seems like a pretty straightforward path for them uh, going forward. I mean, you play now Colombia, England, uh, plays the winner of Sweden, Switzerland. I, uh, those are, by all accounts, nasty opponents, but not opponents that you are truly afraid of. So, gotta get that. Uh, so this was probably, I don't know whether Group H or Group F are which we which one was more 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 exciting i think from the pure drama of the world champion going out i would probably give the notch to uh, to group f um and then the other four yeah let's say i would say i, I would put the russia uruguay maybe slightly ahead of um England Belgium just for the pure fact that Uruguay actually played for first place and Russia uh, and Russia also tried so I mean yes the game was decided after 20 minutes and the latest after 30 so uh, it was over then but at that moment I didn't feel uh, as cheated as I felt with uh, Belgium England for the first half yes they were scoring chances but uh, it was not a pretty game to watch and uh, also if yellow cards become the thing that you're counting in a game, I'm sorry. Maybe it was tactics from Belgium. Uh, kind of, yeah, England said they want to have first place. We said we want to have second place. We were publicly out there stating all that. Uh, so let's get some yellow cards uh, to really show that we really want to get the second place. And then we score a wonderful goal. I don't think this is what happened. I actually think that the coach might be actually a little bit upset that Yanuzai is uh, making that goal. Who knows? But yeah, uh, it was a weird game. I think the the Tunisia. Well, I think the Tunisia Panama game was probably the better one. And I said yes, yes, it to, to a colleague. Um, it's probably worth more worth it watching that one. There might actually be more happening. Uh, because they play for pride and both teams haven't won a World Cup game in a long time. I mean, Panama never has won a World Cup game and I'm sure that Tunisia wanted to get a winner. Uh, I'm, actually not, yeah, to, I'm actually not sure if Tunisia ever won, but I think they did in the first World Cup for sure. In 78, I think they won against Mexico. So yeah. Uh, and then we are left with groups C and uh, B, uh, yeah, uh, C takes the last spot. I didn't find any drama drama in Group B. Uh, what I liked in Group B, uh, E, E. What I liked in Group E uh, was that actually Brazil showed some nice moves. So you always gotta give uh, you always gotta give that. Then you had of course the negative of Neymar. Uh, being Neymar, I still, I mean, the less, the less heralded players of Brazil, they are spectacular. I'm thinking Coutinho, Paulinho and so on. Those are really, really uh, putting on a show. Uh, Neymar, Neymar needs, needs to be definitely more of a team player. I cannot overstate that uh, enough. If Neymar is a team player, the team uh, would be spectacular to watch. I think he tries to get there. I think he tries to get over himself a little bit. So I gotta give a little bit of credit to Neymar. 
But the result of the group stage basically is uh, we have, except for Germany, all the big boys are in. Uh, that's a surprise in itself, I would say. Uh, I expect at least one more big boy going out. I think the biggest disappointment so far, well, two, di two disappointments, I have to say. Sorry, my nose is itching. Um, the two disappointments, other is Poland, where I expected more, and that no African team made it through. I think those you can put down as the big disappointments, uh, sporting-wise. There is another disappointment, but that's just the way it happened, and that's that Peru didn't get out. I, I, I'm really... Uh, I don't say I can't get over the fact, I mean, I have already uh, made peace with the fact that we don't have Peru in there. Uh, they were easily the most entertaining side. Um, like Colombia showed for a while that they can also be a very entertaining team, especially against Poland. Oops. Especially when they played against Poland, but um, Peru takes top spot for me. Uh, of course, entertaining can also mean lots of drama, and what's more drama than what Argentina put on? I, it is. It really has to be said. Argentina did not play well, and they really did not deserve going uh, through to the second round. So, but uh, in terms of drama. You cannot beat that. They remind me very much of Italy in 94 in that regard. That Italy team lost the first game. Uh, they won a nail biter against Norway and then barely made it out of the group group which with a draw against Mexico. Um, it's very, very similar. France in 2006 is another one that was uh, slightly similar, but are not. Uh, you still had the sense there might be something going for them. But yeah, uh, for that France team could, could have also been eliminated, but they never lost. They would have gone out. But this Italy 94, uh, maybe they had more going for it. This Italy team was uh, well coached, although there was enough drama with Baggio being uh, taken off the field um, against Norway. The surprise loss to Ireland when this Italy team was basically favorites to win, you know, all that, those kind of things. Uh, I think they had the better players. I mean, uh, look at the lineup of that Italy team. Uh, that's an all star lineup, uh, which is not true for Argentina. But the way it happened with the drama surrounding is, is very, very similar. Um, and also that you had uh, Roberto Baggio who was not uh, showing up in the group stage and uh, the first time he showed up is when he made the equalizer against Nigeria. Uh, before that, there was no budget in that game. And yeah, Messi showed up more. I don't want to I don't want to put it as much on Messi because Messi really showed up. Uh, but you could see that against Croatia, the team gave itself up. For me, this is the biggest point. That team gave up at that point. Uh, in the tournament and then they got the chance and did they play great against Nigeria? No, but they it seemed more of a team suddenly. It seemed that there is something there and for me going forward this is the biggest thing to watch. That first game France Argentina that's the big one for me. Um, yeah and while we're there shall we go already to round two? Uh, to Maybe um, let's go back. One last thing I want to talk about is the group stage. Can can it be fixed? Oh. I think I said the big fix yesterday would be to not have the fair play, but maybe have even the FIFA ranking uh, play a part in um, differentiating the teams. Um, but you know, I think you could keep the fair play in in in, in there. It's probably a nice message. I just I still think it's a. A horrible way of getting out of the tournament, but so a penalty shootouts. So, yeah, you might as well play nice and do that. But uh, the one thing with yellow and uh, cards is that it's not consistent. I mean, you just gotta get uh, two referees that are more on the card giving side, and you're already at, at a disadvantage. So, that's why I don't like it as much as maybe it kind of differentiate them by simply use using the FIFA ranking because then you know already going in how it's going.
Uh, I don't like any other chance. Like we, uh, now we have the three groups coming in eight years, the groups of three, I should say. Um, I don't think this is in any way a solution, especially if the top two teams go on. If only the top team goes on, then uh, every game counts. But if the top two, you can always make an arrangement that uh, one goes forward. Uh, that uh, the two can play in such a way that the two of them advance at the expense of the third team. So I don't think this is the solution for sure. Now, round two. Uh, we have 10 European teams, four South American teams, one from Asia and one from North America. Um, yeah, the big boys from Europe are going through and kind of was expected. I mean, after all, it's a European World Cup. Uh, that the Asian teams are going through, uh, that one Asian team is going through, I think that's a good thing. Uh, probably even at the expense of, of an African team. Uh, I mean, Russia is close, closer to Asia in regards to Africa, I would say. So maybe, yeah, um, it makes sense that it is Japan, of course, has a little bit of political dimension since let's, uh, we know that Russia and Japan have at least some border disputes, island disputes, however you want to say. So let's go in that lane here. Um, but yeah, we have four South American teams, ten European teams. So uh, those, this was to be expected. Now, uh, the bracket itself, it is not as badly one-sided as it could have been, but it is definitely one-sided. In the upper half, especially this first quadrant, where you have Uruguay, Portugal, France and Argentina. That looks like a really tough uh, a spot to be in. The Brazil one is then we have Brazil and Mexico um, and Belgium and Japan. Uh, yeah, there are, I would say, two and a half really strong teams in there. And I let you do the dividing up how I got to the two and a half. Um, then, yeah. And now it gets a little bit on, on the not so interesting side. Um, we have Spain playing Russia. Uh, we have Croatia uh, playing Denmark. Uh, Spain stands out. Croatia is a close second. And then I think the rest, uh, it's of course goes Denmark, Russia. Uh, that uh, way, Denmark is a nasty team to play, but um, I I really don't think slash hope that they're giving any problem to Croatia. I think Croatia is a really, really solid team. Um, I even want to go as far that if Croatia makes it to the semi-final, they're in the final. Uh, but that's a big if. I mean, you gotta go through Spain, but I, I would like a Croatia's chances against Spain. I think Croatia really could put a run together. Uh, they, are, they are my sleeper team on this part of the bracket. Um, and then we have the boring one um, with Sweden, Switzerland, uh, a game that everyone is look, look, looking forward to. Uh, and we have England, Colombia, which actually I think could be an entertaining game. Uh, both sides have it in them. Um, looking for, uh, I gotta admit I'm looking forward a little bit to that one. And for some reason I'm more, I don't know. I like Colombia, but there's something about this Eng e England team that I like. I've, I've, I would like to see them go a little bit further for once. Uh, I just, uh, what I hate for, for most English players is the, uh, the absolute hammering they get from the press and at home. Maybe not so much at home, but from the press, they absolutely get hammered. It's always high, 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 and then you fall, and then you exit somewhere and you get absolutely hammered. I think the assessment at Euro 16 was a little bit unfair. I think the team got, I don't know where, where they lost their plot. I think they really played well against Russia and then they beat Wales. Um, and then they somehow lost the plot and I don't know exactly what happened. But I always felt it a little bit unfair that, um, yes, you cannot lose to Iceland. And yes, the way it went down was not great, but there something had happened there. Well. So, uh, I already gave you the four quadrants of the bracket. Yeah, the one, the one with Argentina, France, Uruguay, Port Portugal is super intriguing. Um, the only thing I hope is 
that it's not Uruguay and France making out of that because that's the only uh, that will be the only match with no immediate wow this is a game to watch implications um, but any other way all other, and now we know that it will be Euro Uruguay France com coming out of that one uh, <laughs> having said that um, which is also a nice matchup in in itself but uh, it doesn't hold anything against Portugal France replay of the Euro 2016 final and in addition Portugal has the largest colony of or largest expat colony in France so you have that going uh, you also have a little bit Atletico Madrid matchup with uh, Atletico Real Madrid matchup uh, there with uh, Griezmann against Ronaldo so those stars play against each other so there is a lot there and of sure France would like to get revenge uh, having said Real Madrid Atletico Madrid you also would uh, now if France plays your your guys Atletico offense against Atletico defense so at least uh, there will be some of it and then you have the two big ones and I don't know how I would rank them. Uh, historically, I would rank Argentina, Uruguay higher, but at the moment, I think it would be the matchup that um, you wanna see less than if it was Portugal against Argentina. Um, Argentina, Uruguay, first World Cup final. It is a big rivalry. It's one of the biggest rivalries on, uh, in South America and probably in world football. Uh, those teams share a lot of Copa Americas between the two of them. There is no love lost. Um, just read the stories about the 1930 final where um, they actually had to take out uh, guns and all that kind of stuff. But and it's, I still think this is pretty, pretty, pretty much there. They are Rio Platense neighbors. So yeah, big rivalry. Uh, I would, it would be fun to watch. But will it be as much fun to watch as Argentina against Portugal, Ronaldo against Messi? The this would actually be the game that the World Cup deserves. Also to settle finally the Ronaldo versus Messi debate. I really would love to see that one. I gotta say, I'm, I would, I'm, I would give Portugal the edge at the moment, and that would. Um, make me want to watch this a little bit less because I've been on record I'm okay with Ronaldo but I like Messi more so um, for that reason maybe this matchup is a little bit uh, less appealing but for the sheer uh, massive headlines that we produce we finally get to see Messi versus Ronaldo at a big tournament I mean what what could be better than that? So, for that part, that bracket is great. Uh, the other one is, of course, that we have uh, Brazil, Belgium are set to match up. And I actually think that Brazil against Mexico, that's not an easy matchup for Brazil. I think they are, they, Mexico somehow, in some ways, has their number. Uh, I'm also curious for the jersey matchup, but I think I'll make my own video on it. But Mexico-Brazil is actually the, my second favorite matchup in that round. I know Brazil has the better team, but Mexico matches up very well against offensive teams. Uh, so this will be a one to watch for sure. Uh, the other one that I look perversely forward to is Sweden-Switzerland. Just because those are two similar teams. Uh, and yeah i don't expect a great match but uh, just for that uh, the, the soccer pervert in me wants to see that game i don't i can't explain why but this is a game i have kind of penciled in and then of course colombia against england those are the if i had to choose four matches i think those would be my four um i honestly expect uruguay against portugal to be a snooze fest and but so do i with switzerland against sweden but for some reason, there is something about this that I it will not make me want to watch. Uh, look away. I expect Russia against Spain to be a little bit of a shoe shooter that's very one-sided in Spain's favor. Um, what else can we say? Uh, Uruguay, Portugal already said. I expect a zero-zero. I expect a dull match. Um, 
Belgium, Japan could be an interesting one, uh, but Belgium probably will win that easily. Um, and then we have Croatia, Denmark. I think Croatia will grind out a one nothing draw, if not a 2 nothing. So there you have the four games and we'll see how the projections look like uh, for that. I mean, you probably already saw the video. I still have to make the video, but uh, not much has changed from yesterday. And I probably will give you a preview on the jersey matchups and maybe even a review on previous jersey matchups and in the group stage. I arrived at work, so better get to it and I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.